welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today I am so excited to be introducing our brand new interactive die center picture window card. This die is so much fun. It also has an add-on die, so the center picture window card add-on is a decorative add-on and we'll be showing you how to use that in this video. So a center picture window card is this cute little mini card and when you open it there's this really cool three dimensional component in the center of the card almost looking like a little tunnel. These cards are so simple to put together but they pack such a big punch and they're really really fun to decorate too. So in this video we're going to be showing you guys how to put one together nice and simple with craft and white cardstock and then we'll be making these two different cards showing you lots of fun ways to mix and match the elements in this die set along with other dies that you have in your stash. Here are all of the pieces included in the center picture window card die set. And so here you'll see that this first bigger piece here is our card base. The next piece here is the center picture window and that's the oval shaped window that's going to line up with it. We also have these cool little inserts. We have a hill style and a straight style that all have stitching. We also have this great little banner that's folded right in the center to fit perfectly on your picture window. We also have these fun decorative elements like stars, clouds, and a sun and a moon. And then this piece here is going to help us add a little score line to the center of these pieces you're going to be able to use for some other die sets. So we'll be showing you that too. It's really cool how they all mix and match. So first we're going to work with the card base die and that has a little score line right in the center so you'll run that through your die cut machine and then you can take this cute little mini card and have it scored right in the center and just fold and I like to use a bone folder to create a nice sharp crease. Next we've cut the center picture window card piece and you'll see that the die has three score lines and we're going to be lining up that middle score line with this oval shaped window and I want to show you that the oval shaped window has these pieces in the center. Those don't come off so don't cut those off because those are actually the guide that you're going to use to help center this window in the card. So you have your three score lines there. We're going to look at that one in the center. You're going to take that die and you're going to look through those two metal lines in the middle and you're going to take your score line and put it right in the center of those two metal pieces. So it's really easy to see in person. It might be a little hard to see on camera, but I've centered that score line right there in the middle of those two metal pieces, holding in place with some low tack tape. And now I have this awesome stitched oval opening and another little oval that you can use to decorate your card too. Then we're going to go ahead and fold along the score lines that the die created for us. So we're going to fold in the center and then we're going to fold the tabs on either side. So I like to start in the center and then push to the outside edges and that really kind of helps start the fold, helps crease it and then you can really solidify the crease using your bone folder just like that. Next we'll work with the insert pieces and so you'll see here on these dies that each one of these has three score lines and there's different sizes, different heights, and different styles. So we have the straight styles and then the hill styles and you can mix and match these and there you can see what these look like when they're all cut out. So you can fold in the center of all of them and then you can also go ahead and fold along the score lines of all of them. So each one of them has three score lines, one in the center and then two creating tabs on either side. The next step is to add tape to all of these tabs. So I'm using some eighth inch double sided tape and I'm going to put them on the outside of all of the tabs on both the inserts and also on the center picture window piece. So right there you'll see I'm adding it to all of these different little tabs and then we can go ahead and add it to the center picture window card as well. Now that we have tape on all of the tabs, we're going to start to work with our card base. So we're going to open to the inside of the card base and we're going to take the center picture window card piece and we're going to peel up the liner paper on the right hand side. Then we're going to fold that tab under. So you're going to take that right tab and we're going to fold it under. Next, we'll take the score line that's on the window piece and line it up with the score line in the center of the card base. So we're just going to line those two pieces up and once all of those score lines are lined up, we can press down on the right side securing that in place. And this is very easy to see in person. It might be a little hard to see that score line on the video, but in person you'll see it's super, super simple. 
So now we're going to take our two hills and we're going to remove the liner paper on the right side of the tabs again, fold that right side under, and once again we're going to line up the score line. So we're going to line up the score line that the die created in the middle of the hill and the score line that the die created in the middle of the card base, and we're going to attach that right hand side. So we'll fold our right hand piece under and line up those score lines just like that, and then we're going to attach that next one. And we're lining these all up along the base of the card. Then we'll take all those inserts, move them over to the right, and then fold them in half towards the center of the card. So we'll repeat that. We're going to take all the pieces, move them over to the right, and then fold them in half, pointed towards the center of the card. And then we can peel up that liner paper. And don't worry, we'll be repeating this all throughout the video so you'll get to see this done lots of times. And once you do it once, it's super simple. So we'll peel up the liner paper and you can see all of those tabs are folded in half, all pointed towards the left hand side. Now we can take our card and we're gonna close it just like a book. And we're going to pick up that tape. So I'm going to press down really well, make sure that tape is nice and secure. And when you pop it open, you have this amazing tunnel effect with those hills hanging out and this cool little opening ready for you to decorate. This die set includes these cute little stars and they're perfectly sized to fit in the corners of the window piece. So you'll see there we ran it through the die cut machine and now there's these cute little stars in the corners. I think it's just adorable. This would be really sweet with the Upon a Star stamp set. And so there I've peeled up the liner paper, folded that right tab under, I'm lining up my score lines and we're going to attach that down into the card base. We peeled up the right hand side of the tab, folded the right hand under and we're lining up those score lines again. So now we'll take that next one, peel up the liner paper, fold that right tab under, and then we're going to line up those score lines. So you can see now, you don't necessarily have to line them all up along that bottom edge. In this case, I took that taller one there in the back and I shifted it up to give it more kind of like a stadium seating kind of look. So it really just depends on the scene that you're looking for. So you can play around with it and come up with some cool ways to create really different looks. So now we've opened up the card and you can see now we've got a higher hill up in the back. So I love that there's so many fun and different options. There you can see we've got the straight hills and we've got the wavy hills. Now here is the banner included in the die set and has a score line right in the center. And what's great about this is you can stamp your sentiment on it and that score line is perfectly set so you can layer it right over your window just like that. And I love that look so much. You can take the other little die cuts included in the set and use them to decorate in the backs of your scenes. So now we're going to work with that cool little T-shaped piece that adds a score line. And that piece is designed to work with inserts from the shadow box card. So all of the different inserts from the original shadow box card and the add-ons actually work with the center picture window card. So I'm going to show you how that works. So I went ahead and just picked some random ones. I've got the ocean one and one of the original inserts. And I die cut those from some craft cardstock. And there are two different ways that you can work with these add-ons. One way is to just trim off those tabs. So I just like to fold along the tab there, the score line that the die creates for me, I'm just gonna trim them right off. And another way is to just leave those tabs on. So here I'm just gonna fold it on this one. Then we're gonna take our T-shaped scoring piece here, and you'll see that it's perfectly sized to the size of that ocean wave add-on piece. So I'm just gonna line up the right and left sides. I can hold it in place with some low-tack tape, and that's gonna add a score line right into the center of my die cut. So this is a really nice way to do it where you don't have to measure it, you don't have to put it in your scoring tool, you can just use that die nice and quick to create a piece that's gonna to work to cover up part of the center picture window card. If you're doing it without cutting the tabs off, you just line the two edges up of that T piece with the score lines of the die. So I'm lining it up with the left score line and the right score line, holding in place, running it through the die cut machine, and now I'm gonna have a score line right in the center of that piece. If you do the method where you've cut off the tabs, you can take the piece, just add some tape runner to it, and you can layer it right over the center picture window. So that window has been sized perfectly to line up with the size of these inserts. So I love that you can layer it right on top and it gives it that even more of a dimension from the back to the front. Now, if you decide not to take off the tabs, and this is all personal preference because both ways look great, you can just layer it right onto your center picture window before you even start making your card. This is my personal preference because then I don't have to trim off any edges or anything like that. I can just die cut it, score it, and then put it right over the card. And now you can see how cool that looks with the three layers, with the hill in the front and the inserts in the back. 
So this is the center picture window card add-on, and you'll see that it has two rectangles that help you decorate your center picture window card, and it also comes with these cute little trees and birds that are perfect for putting inside your center picture window card, or honestly, even on any kind of card. So you can see they're perfectly sized to fit on those cute little hills, and I really like putting the bird in there on a little piece of acetate so he looks like he's floating up in the sky. And now these little stitched rectangles are perfectly sized to decorate the center picture window card. So right there you can see you can add some tape runner and that's going to be perfectly sized for the front of the card. And then you can also use these side panels for the inside. So they're perfectly sized to fit right on those inside panels. So I love these because they add a cute little decorative element and I love that stitching look too. So now it's time to actually start making a card with this die set. And first up, we're going to be working with our smooth sailing stamp set. So I went ahead and stamped and colored a bunch of images from the set. I also stamped and colored the sign from the Open Me stamp set. And I really love this sign because I feel like it kind of goes along with the whole kind of ship beach feel. So I'm adding a little bit of warm gray marker to the side and blending it out with my colorless blender just to make that sign look like it's a little bit old, maybe at the bottom of the ocean or something something and I'm going to stamp the sentiment thanks for being my anchor. I love stamping sentiments from other stamp sets in that open me cute little sign. Next we're going to use the card base die to die cut some of the spiffy speckles paper and we're going to die cut the picture window there also out of that same paper. Then we'll go ahead and take our oval window opening and we're going to line up that score line in the center right between those two little metal pieces in the center of the oval window. And then we can hold it in place with some low tack tape because that's going to tell us it's in perfect placement. Run it through the die cut machine and now we have that awesome stitched window opening. I have some peacock cardstock here and we're going to die cut one of those hills from the peacock cardstock. And then we're going to die cut the smaller hill there out of some craft card stock. So we're going to have kind of an oceany piece and then more of an actual like land in the background. Then next we're going to take that eighth inch double sided tape and we're going to add that to all of the tabs. So on the outside of the tabs of the window and also on the outside of the tabs of both of my hills. My, more of my ocean hill there and then my land hill for the background. Now that the tape is on there, we'll go ahead and fold along all of the score lines. So there's three on these little insert pieces. We've got the two on the outsides and the one in the center. And so we'll do the two tabs on the outside and then we'll do the one in the center. And then we'll repeat the same thing on our center picture window. So we're gonna fold our tabs over. I always like to start in the center and then work my way out. And then we're gonna fold the whole thing right in the middle. Now we can take our card base and fold along the score line that the die created for us there right in the center of the card. And we're going to open it up to the inside of the card and start working with our different pieces. So I'm going to peel up the liner paper on the right hand side of all of my pieces, my window and my two inserts. Then we're going to start with our window piece and we're going to be lining up the center score line of our window with the center score line of the card base. So we'll line those two up and then we can press down and secure the right hand side in place. I'm going to flip that window over and now I'm going to work with my little ocean piece that's going to be in the front. So I'm going to line up those score lines and then attach that right hand piece. Then we'll take our land piece, we're going to fold that right hand side under, then we're going to line up our score lines and we'll secure that right hand tab piece to the card base. Now we can take all of our pieces and fold them over to the right side and then fold them in half just like that. So now they're all kind of pointing over towards the left. Once we have them all folded in half, we can start to remove the liner paper. So I'm going to peel up the liner paper on all of the tabs, my land, my sea, and also my window. Once all of the tape is exposed, we can go ahead and fold our card base shut. So I'm going to take that left hand side and fold it over, close it just like a book. Everything's going to line up perfectly. We can press down really well, picking up that adhesive and creating this really cool 3D element. 
I love how cool this is looking. So I'm going to use the add-on die now, the center picture window card add-on, and we're going to die cut some of this unicorn main paper. And I love these little rainbow scallops. And I thought the scallops kind of went along with this whole kind of ocean theme that we have going on. And I'm going to stamp some of the seagulls from the Smooth Sailing stamp set in some black licorice ink onto these panels. So I love adding a little decorative element to these panels. And I'm trying to keep this card simple so that it's a little bit easier to make so that I could mass produce some of these because they are so super cute. And I really think that it would make someone smile to get this cool little mini 3D card in the mail. So I'm going to layer those panels which are going to perfectly fit on the right and left hand side of our window. And then we're going to add our elements in. So I'm adding a little of tape runner just along the bottom side of my stamped and die cut piece. And I'm going to add that guy there to the left hand side of my ocean. Then I'm going to take my lighthouse and that's going to be on the land in the background. So I'm going to take that lighthouse and attach it to the right hand side of the land piece. Now one of the tricks for these cards to really make them look 3D is to add elements along the very back area. So in this case I've taken two stamped clouds and we've added them to the background. You can see how cool and 3D that makes it look. To decorate the front we're going to take the center picture window card add-on die and die cut that same spiffy speckles paper with the blue side up. We're also going to die cut some craft card stock and I'm going to use a stitch till side border to cut one of these cool little sandy hills from this. So I want to create a scene on the outside that's somewhat reminiscent about what's going to be on the inside. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to create this cool kind of anchor bottom of the ocean kind of look. So we're going to layer on that cool little stitched hill there and I love that it's got the stitching on the bottom since we cut it with that same stitch rectangle from the add-on die. And then we're going to layer that fun little sign there that's going to have our sentiment onto the front of the card and then added a little foam square to the anchor. Nice and cute and simple and it's really going to then wow the recipient when they open it to the inside of the card. And then here you can see just how cute it is on the inside. So for my messages, I like to write my message sometimes on those little panels on the left and right hand side, but in this case I decided to add my message to the back of the card. So I die cut another one of those squares with the add-on die, and then I'm going to add another hill to the back too, just to kind of keep that whole theme going. And now this is going to be the area where I can write my message. So I would write my message in the blue sky and then write, you know, love Kelly or whatever down in the ground. So I think it's a super cute way to present the message um, on this just adorable little mini card. So on the front there we've got our cute scene and then when you open it this amazing cool 3D element which is just so much fun and then on the backhand side we can write our message telling someone that we've been thinking about them. So in creating this card with pattern paper, it made it really, really simple to quickly create a cool scene. We've also kept the base of the card the same color, so the tunnel area is kind of the same color as the base of the card. So for our next card, we're going to kind of mix and match it up a little bit. So we're going to use some ink blending, and we're going to be creating a darker area in that tunnel, which looks really cool and really makes that pronounced 3D element look really amazing. So what we're going to do is take out some Distress Oxide inks in Wilted Violet, Mermaid Lagoon, and Peacock Feathers. And here I have a little ink blending brush, and we're going to bring these colors onto a big piece of cardstock. And so my Peacock Feathers will be at the top, then the blue color, and then the purple color. And we're going to overlap these slightly so that it looks like there's a kind of continuous blend to create this really cool deep sea ocean look. To create that blend, I'm going back and forth between my colors. So I'll lay down my purple, and then I'll go back to my blue to blend between those two colors, and then I'll mix and match the purple right over it. You can see I'm laying my card base die over this just to make sure it was a big enough area, and it wasn't quite big enough, so I added a little bit more color, just really blending that up, and you can see just how beautiful it looks, and these three colors make an amazing kind of ocean cool, dark undersea look. To give the look of bubbles, I'm going to take a water bottle here, and I'm just going to spritz this, and that's going to react with the ink, creating this really cool, kind of bubbly, awesome look. So I'm going to spritz some water, and then I'll take a paper towel and pick up any of the excess, and then I'll spritz some more water just to add a little more texture and element to it. And this is so cool, and I have a hard time with things that are random, just like spritzing water, but for some reason with these Distress Oxides, I always really love doing it. I always think it it turns out cool no matter what. So a little extra water, pick it up with my paper towel, and now this is looking like it's ready to go to create this really cool tunnel underwater idea that I have in my head.
I'm going to line up my die where I thought it looked the best. I wanted to have a lot of purple in there. Hold it in place with some tape and we'll run that through the die cut machine. I'm also going to take out some paper from Really Rainbow Scallops here, and this is that beautiful purple color. And I'm gonna die cut both the card base and the center picture window card piece from this pattern paper. We'll take that oval shaped opening and we're gonna line up the center score line of our window piece with those two metal pieces in the middle of the die. Then we'll hold it in place with some low tack tape, run it through the die cut machine, and now we're gonna have a stitched window opening perfectly in the center. I'm also going to go ahead and die cut the hill inserts out of some craft cardstock to be kind of the sandy bottom of the ocean floor. For this card, we're going to work with one of those shadow box card inserts. So I've die cut that from some peacock cardstock, and this is from the ocean add on. And we're going to use that scoring tool included in the center picture window card. We'll line it up with the tabs on the left and right hand side with those score lines. We'll hold it in place with some low tack tape and run it through the die cut machine and get a nice score line in the center of this piece. And I love that I can use dies from my shadow box card with the center picture window card. It's so awesome that they're all sized to work together. We're gonna add some nice double-sided tape there to the back of this ocean piece, going up the sides of the tabs and also along the bottom. And then we're gonna fold along the score lines on the tabs on the left and right and down in the center. And we're also gonna fold along the score lines of our window piece. So we'll fold the two tabs and then right in the center. Now we're gonna take that ocean piece and we're gonna line it up with the bottom. I like to do this before I put my whole card together because it's gonna give me a guide as to where I wanna put my sandy hills for the bottom of the ocean. So I'm just gonna line it up. The tabs will line up with the tabs right along the bottom of my window piece and I love that ocean detail. Now we'll take that same eighth inch tape and we're gonna add our tape now to the outside of the tabs. So the outside of the tabs of the window piece and also of the sandy hills. Then we can fold along the score lines that the die created for us on our insert pieces. Now to put this into our card, we're gonna peel up the liner paper on the right hand side and fold that right hand tab under. Then we're gonna line up the center score line of the card base with the center score line of our window piece and we can press down on the right hand side securing that in place. Then we're gonna take our sandy hill there and I'm gonna peel up that liner paper and then put that right into the center of the card. So we've got the center of the hill lining up with the center of the card base. And you'll see that I've shifted it up a little bit from the bottom because I wanted it to be up a little bit higher so that you could really see it behind that ocean wave. Then we'll take our pieces, move them all to the right, and then fold them in half towards the center of the card. So we'll repeat that one more time. I've got all my pieces there to the right, and then we're gonna fold them in half towards the center of the card, lining them all up just like that. And then we can peel up the liner paper on the hills and the window piece. We can fold the card shut, press down really well and we're gonna pick up all of that adhesive creating the really cool inside kind of tunnel 3D effect. And this is my favorite part when you open it up and you see inside. Next, I'm gonna use our new six inch ruler to measure the size on either side of this window and it's gonna be one and five eighths on both sides. And so I really liked how this looked where the ocean background was kind of extending across the whole thing. But what I really wanted for this card is I really wanted to just see that ocean in the center. But I really like both looks. So I kind of want to make another card where I leave it just as it is. But in this case, I'm going to cut down pieces to be one and five eighths. And I'm cutting them down from that card base that I cut earlier. So I didn't even have to worry about trimming down the height. I'm also going to die cut another one of those shadow box card insert pieces. And so I'm going to take this, I'm going to trim off the two tab sides, and then I'm just going to trim this insert in half. And when you trim one of these shadow box card inserts in half, it's the perfect size to fit on either side of the opening. So I'm just trimming it in half, and now you'll see I can add some tape runner to the back, and they're going to layer perfectly over those pattern paper pieces. I really like this look because it's gonna make it look like that ocean piece extends over the whole back of the card. So we'll add some tape runner to the back of these. And then now you can see it's like extending the whole front piece, but we're gonna have that beautiful colored area on the inside. And so this makes it really, really easy to do. Obviously I did a lot of inking on this, but you could have used a pattern paper, like a purple pattern paper in the background, and then a different pattern paper on the front. So you could do inking, colored cardstock, pattern papers, and I love how it's looking. 
So this is our new set, Seahorse and Around, and I love those seahorses so much. I went ahead and stamped and colored those seahorses and also cut some seaweed as well. We're gonna add a little tape runner just to the bottoms of their tails and we can layer them down into the ocean floor then. And then I'm gonna take one of those little seaweeds and add it to that back hill. And that's really gonna give a really cool three-dimensional element to the card. Now this is some acetate and this stuff is awesome because it's really, really sturdy. And so I'm just gonna trim down about an eighth of an inch thick, a nice skinny piece of acetate, add a little tape runner to the top and I'm gonna take a heart that I stamped and colored and add it to the top of that acetate. Then I'll take that long acetate piece and I'm going to fit it into my card, kind of seeing exactly how high I want it. And once I know, I'm just gonna leave my thumb right in the right place and then trim off any of the excess. And that's a really easy way to get the right height for your acetate piece without having to measure or anything. So now I can add a little tape runner to the bottom of that acetate and I'm gonna attach it to the back of that hill and it's gonna look like the little heart is floating above the seahorses. <laughs> it's such a cute look. I wanted to add a little more decorations to the side of this card. So this is the Keep On Swimming stamp set. And so I went ahead and stamped a colored a bunch of the fish from this set in some yellows and oranges, which I thought was a really cool contrast to the blues and purples that we have going on on the inside of the card. And so I'm just gonna layer those in to the sides of the card. And you'll see that it really just fills it in and it's such a cute look. So I was mixing and matching little bubbles and different types of fish, but I decided to kind of have the echo of the two little puffer fish and then the two normal fish on either side. And I just love how that's looking and how amazing it is to see that cool, beautiful sky in the background that we created earlier. I decided to trim some more of that scallop paper to put on the outside of this card base. So I'm just gonna layer that on the front and the back of the card base. And you'll see just how pretty that looks. I really love that scallop. I was deciding between the lighter and the darker purple and um, it's really hard to pick. Sometimes I'm like, should I pick the darker one? I don't know, but it looks absolutely amazing. And so right now here, we're gonna start working with some different paper. So I have die cut using the add-on some white cardstock and I'm gonna add that to the back of the card and that's where I'm going to write my message. But for the front of the card, I wanted to kind of echo the look of the oval on the inside. So I'm gonna use that oval opening and I'm gonna die cut another piece that I inked just the way we inked the piece at the beginning. And so the cool thing about this oval is, is you can use the inside of that oval and it looks really, really amazing on the front of the card. I also cut, die cut some craft cardstock with that same oval and I'm gonna use a little stitch till side border to create a sandy hill, kind of mimicking the sandy hill on the inside. I really love to give the recipient a little bit of an idea of what's gonna be on the inside of the card on the outside. So I'm gonna stamp your fantastic in the corner there and then I'm gonna add this cute little clamshell with a little foam square onto this oval and then we can add some more foam squares to the back of the oval and layer that to the outside of the card. It keeps the outside of the card nice and simple, but super, super cute. And once again, gives a little idea of what they're gonna see on the inside of the card. And so now the card is all done and I love opening up this cute little mini card and seeing that incredible three-dimensional scene on the inside. The distress ink background in the background really gives it depth and just makes it look incredible. I also loved mixing and matching the different stamp sets on the inside, it just makes me smile. And then here on the back, we've got our area to write the message for the recipient. And so these cards are so much fun to make. One of the things I love about them is that you could use them with any stamp sets that you might have have in your stash and create really, really cool scenes. Maybe a scene at the park, we've got one in the ocean, one of outer space, you can just have a blast. It's anything that's in your imagination, which makes these cards so much fun to make. And then here you can see the two cards that we made in the video today. One a little more simple, just using pattern paper. And then on the one on the right, we did distress ink and stepped it up a little bit by creating an inky background and just having a ton of fun mixing and matching stamp sets. So now we have some awesome cards by the design team. So first up, we have this gorgeous card by Kay, and I love on the front how she's got her cute little palm trees, and then when you open it up to the inside, she has this incredible three-dimensional beach scene. I love that she has die cuts in her center picture window, and then stamped and colored images on the outside. I love the mix and match of these two different types of images. 
Here, this card by Audrey is so much fun. I love how she has the open me on the front with that cute little alien. And when you open it on the inside, she has this amazing die cut background with all those stars and the aliens floating on acetate, which is so super cool. This card by Elena is so sweet. I love that little puffer fish just hiding there in the waves. And then when you open it up, it's absolutely stunning. I love how she layered things on the back and the front and on those hills. Just gorgeous. This card by Megan is so cute. When you open it up, it has this adorable little farm scene, which is just so sweet. And I love how she added the trees from the park add-on for the shadow box. They fit perfectly in there and look so cool. This card by Yanea is just gorgeous. I love the ink blending that she has on the front. And when you open it to the inside, she has our adorable little mermaid floating in this really cool ocean scene. It's just gorgeous and so much fun. This card by Leticia is so sweet. I love that the front of the card is just all die cut. And then when you open up the card, you've got this amazing sailboat scene. I love how the anchor is hanging in there and how she's got her little sentiment at the top of the window. This card by Elise is so cute. She's got the little peacock standing there. And then when you open it up, she has an amazing peacock with all his feathers out in the center. I love how she continued the scene from the sides and into the center picture window. So I cannot wait to see what you guys create with this die set. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.